You're watching America This Morning, America's number one early morning news. Good Wednesday morning. It is day two of the government shutdown, and the ripple effects are being felt across the nation. Now, despite the growing sense of anger and frustration on the part of many Americans, no new talks are scheduled. The Republicans are set to try a plan which would fund only certain parts of the government. ABC's Taman Bradley is live at the Capitol for us this morning. Good morning, Taman. Good morning, Diana and John. There is absolutely no sign of compromise here on Capitol Hill, and it doesn't look like anything is going to get done. In fact, both sides are bracing for this shutdown to go on for a while. Meanwhile, the public is fed up. The government shutdown enters its second day with no end in sight. Across the country, anger is growing. I think it's crazy. I think, uh, I mean, the, the whole holding the government hostage over Obamacare is just ridiculous. Bunch of jerks running the show up there. 800,000 federal workers will stay home again today without pay. About 6,700 of them civilian workers at this military base in central New Jersey. They just told us um, until further notice, you know, uh, you're furloughed and when we call you, come on back in. Local officials are worried about the economic impact. As these people start uh, losing their paychecks, they're not going to spend the money in town. According to one estimate, the government shutdown will cost taxpayers $300 million a day, $12.5 million an hour, and $1.6 billion a week. But that price tag hasn't brought Congress closer to a deal. Last night in a new strategy, House Republicans tried to fund some parts of the government, like national parks and veterans benefits. But the measures were defeated by Democrats who won a full government spending bill without changes to President Obama's health care law. They took hostages by shutting down the government, and now they're releasing one hostage at a time. As Washington braces for a prolonged shutdown, some Republicans now admit it's time to put a clean funding bill on the floor. I think this shutdown's a bad idea and I want to clean CIO. An even bigger crisis is creeping closer. On October 17th, the country will run out of money to pay its bills unless Congress raises the debt ceiling. John Dana. All right, Tamon Broadley, live in Washington. Thank you. And now to one of the most touching images from the shutdown. Veterans, most of whom had served in World War II, arrived in Washington, D.C., and they didn't know that the memorial erected in their honor was closed. Well, with the help from a few lawmakers, the hundred or so vets removed the barriers and were able to walk in. One of the vets from Mississippi said that this is probably the last trip he'll make to Washington, and seeing that memorial was awesome, just awesome. Well, some more consequences of the shutdown to note now. The military is closing all 246 of its commissaries on inst installations around the world. Now, those commissaries provide tax-free groceries to about 12 million people, including military personnel, their families, and retirees. If the shutdown drags on, obviously those people would see their grocery bills climb significantly. And the nation's service academies have suspended all their sports teams. That means no football practice at Army, Navy, and Air Force. Their games this coming Saturday are all also in jeopardy. Army is supposed to play Boston College and Air Force is scheduled to play Navy. A decision on whether or not to go ahead with those games will be made tomorrow. And that brings us to our Facebook question of the day. How has the government shutdown impacted you? Lots of people already weighing in on this. Join the discussion at ATMFans.com.